Well, good afternoon, parents and guardians of Fairfield University students. I uh, would like to welcome you to the university here. My name is Todd Palaza. I'm the Director of Public Safety at the university. I've been here for 39 years now, and I'd also like to introduce my associate. Uh, my name is John Ritchie. I'm the Assistant Director here at, uh, in Public Safety at Fairfield University. Um, I'm going on 22 years here now. Basically, we're here to help your students uh, succeed. And how we do that is both simple and complex. Um, our mission really is to provide a safe and secure environment for your students to thrive and learn in. Um, we're authorized to prevent, um, report, and investigate any violations of state, federal laws, as well as university regulations. We. Uh, our jurisdiction is strictly on campus. We do not patrol the beach area or any areas that are off campus to us. Any incidents that would involve uh, off campus locations would include the Fairfield Police Department. How do we do that? Um, we provide a variety of different services. You think of us uh, very similar to a local police department. However, we're much more service oriented. Um, we provide escort services 24 hours a day. So if someone felt uncomfortable uh, walking from one spot to another on campus, public safety officers would be more than happy to provide an escort. Uh, we do self-defense classes throughout the year. We have a campus ride-along program where students can ride along with public safety officers and get to know us a little better as well as see what our duties are. We also have a medical amnesty program. Again, our interest is in the safety of our students. So if someone uh, say was intoxicated to the point where they felt they needed medical attention, if they or a third party called us, we would certainly be able to assist them uh, without any ramifications or disciplinary action. All of our officers are certified emergency medical technicians. So we provide a lot of the uh, primary care uh, as well as crisis care in the medical field. Uh, our officers carry a full range of equipment, uh, to provide that service. We also teach on campus. We do CPR training as well as run an EMT class. Um, we have crime prevention classes throughout the year uh, and residence hall programs. There's a lot more that we do, but that's just a tip of the iceberg on, on some of our duties. Uh, some safety tips that we'd always like to recommend. Um, you've probably heard me say this during orientation, but if your sons and daughters are locking their uh, bedroom doors at your house, that might be an issue. Um, here, we try to educate them to do that. It's very important. Crime is very low on the campus. However, anything could happen anywhere at any time. And what we want to do is educate our students to lock their doors, even if they're going away for a short time. Uh, just as important, our residence halls are locked 24 hours a day. Uh, students access the building through their STAG card. And we ask our students not to prop doors open. This really defeats the system and can be easily, um, we can increase our safety very easily just by not propping doors open. We also ask our students to be aware of their surroundings, to have that 360 degree sense of awareness about them, to walk in high traveled areas and to stay in well lit areas. Also to walk with friends um, and use local phone services and to report any suspicious activity or crimes to public safety as soon as possible so we can address those situations. So when, when should people contact us? Um, any situation that seems out of the ordinary or out of the normal range, okay? Uh, before things blow up, we want people to give us a call. Any unusual noises, screams, breaking glass, things of that nature. Also, uh, if they recognize someone that may seem out of place and things just don't seem right to them, we'd much rather uh, check things out, go on calls that turn out to be very innocent in nature than let something happen and go unreported. All right, so how do you get in touch with the Department of Public Safety? Uh, you know, most of the time everyone has their cell phone with them, um, so we ask that you give us a call on your cell phone. We actually want the students to pre-program our number into their cell phone before they need us. Our phone number is 203-254-4090, um, and, we, and we don't expect students to really remember that number, 
Um, remembering the 4090 part might be easy. Remembering we're in area code 203 is easy, but you can remember the whole 203, 254, 4090. So we want to encourage everyone to put that number in their phone already. Um, we have blue light emergency phones around campus, our uh, code blue phones. Um, so anyone walking around campus um, looking for the blue light, we have a blue light on top of a blue pole uh, to make the phone visible after dark. Um, so you can find those throughout campus. Um, we also have them on every residence hall in every residence uh, building, uh, on each floor in each residence hall. Um, so phones are always available to students to be able to contact us. Plus the elevators all have phones inside of them. Um, so it's pretty easy to, to find a way to reach out to us and contact us. Another way of reaching out to us is through an emergency app. I'll actually uh, talk about the emergency app here in just a minute. Um, the Fairfield Jew webpage, our DPS webpage, actually has an anonymous tip option as well. So if a student wants to, to send us uh, information anonymously, they can certainly do that through a tip to text option on our website. Um, and then, of course, anyone can walk to our office. We're located in Loyola Hall, room two. It's the ground floor of Loyola Hall. Um, but if I come back to the emergency app, we recently um, purchased a new app option for the university community, and that's the emergency app. And uh, on our smartphones now, we could download this app. Um, when students set it up, they'll be able to simply open the app, hit a red button. It'll automatically report inf uh, incidents to our office on a screen that's similar to what you see here. Um, it'll automatically start to stream audio and video right to our dispatch center. So our dispatcher has the ability to see and hear what's going on. So if somebody's having an issue on campus, they're concerned about a suspicious person, they think somebody's following them, um, a fight breaks out or whatever might be happening, they can use this app. Um, the dispatcher will be able to see what's going on and relay that information to responding officers. The uh, app, uh, students can uh, download the app um, and set it up for themselves. And, and during the setup phase, they have the option of putting in personal information. Um, obviously, their name and phone number would be quite critical to us. They could put a photograph of themselves in there as well. So now we know who we're concerned with um, upon response. And they could go in and put in other biological uh, information. They could put in medical information. Uh, if somebody has a known medical condition and they want us to be aware of it um, and they hit the button during a medical crisis, when we arrive, we'll actually have that information at our fingertips. Uh, so if you, your sons and daughters do have a condition, we'd, we'd recommend putting that info in there. Now, that information is all confidential. Um, we cannot activate the app from our office. The student or the community member has to activate the app themselves. All right, so any information that they put in there um, uh, just sits there. We are unable to access it until the student activates the emergency app. Um, so Big Brother's not watching. Other ways we can get in touch with us. The uh, Stag Alert system, um, it's a... Uh, our way of, of notifying the community of a problem on campus. Um, we use the stag alert system in a dire emergency. Um, it's how we're gonna notify the community of, of a crisis that's occurring right now. But we'll also use the stag alert system to notify the, the campus community of uh, delayed openings due to weather conditions or um, early cancellations. Um, we'll use it for other basic information. Um, it it's, uh, gives us a lot of options of reaching out to the community to keep them informed of what's going on. The uh, STAG Alert system, students are automatically enrolled into the STAG Alert system. All we ask is the student ensures that they maintain their, their updated cell phone numbers in the uh, system. So when they go into uh, what we call our my.fairfield um, link, that the student maintains their actual uh, up-to-date phone number. Um, and students are automatically enrolled. The, uh, Unfortunately, though, it only is uh, students and employees who are enrolled. So parents, unfortunately, you do not get this information. So if something was to happen on campus, um, it would be up to your sons or daughters to notify you or keep you up on what's going on and what's the latest. And one of the things we encourage you to do is go uh, to the university website, and we would put detailed information out uh, about any situation that parents should be aware of. Also, um, the app emergency has the ability to have three contact people involved. Uh, so your sons and daughters will um, have to put at least one contact person in there. It automatically goes to DPS, uh, but they could put three other contacts in it. Um, so that can be reported to you if uh, you talk to your son or daughter, they can do that. All right, back to the Stagler system. The, uh Stagler system, we have the ability to reach out to people's uh, cell phones via text, email, 
or voice, and we have the options just choosing which one we're going to send out depending on the nature of the emergency or situation. The other thing we have are timely warnings. A timely warning is a piece of information that we're going to share with the university community uh, to keep the community up to date on recent trends, uh, specifically if we're worried about uh, crime trends on campus. Um, if we have a recent rash of car break-ins, um, we would share that information on what we, we call a timely warning. And timely warnings will go out uh, by email, uh, depending on the nature of the threat. It may also include a text message. Um, we, the reason we share that information is so students can be aware of what's going on, and they can also become our eyes and ears out there. Um, you know, we have a limited number of staff, and the campus is uh, over 200 acres, so it's, it's difficult for us to be everywhere all the time. But when we have uh, 2,000 students up and about at any given time, um, they become eyes and ears for us. And if they are aware that there's a problem going on, they see something that relates to that problem, um, they're more apt to give us a call and let us know that they see something. Um, so we like using the timely warnings very much. Closed circuit television. We have over 350 cameras throughout the campus, both interior and exterior cameras. At this point, all of our entrances to the university are equipped with a camera system so we can see who is entering and exiting the campus. All of our residence halls also have closed circuit television. Parking, the, uh, the third wheel on every campus. Uh, parking is very limited on campus, as you saw during move-in day. Um, we do not allow first-year students and sophomores to have cars on campus. There are very limited uh, exceptions, but they are only for extreme situations uh, and very critical situations and very timely uh, situations. Uh, we have a shuttle bus service, though, that goes throughout the town. There are two routes, um, and we encourage our students to utilize that. We also have zip card service on our campus, so if anyone wanted to enroll in that program, they could purchase uh, somewhat like leasing or renting uh, a vehicle for the day. All right, emergency guidelines, um, response options. Some of the things that we do, um, we, we like to educate our community, and we, we recently did talk to um, the, the uh, incoming first-year students the other night, and we talked about some of the, the, you know, the more serious incidents that could potentially occur on a college campus. Um, but our response options when we send out alerts, we're going to send out an alert and they'll say something, maybe shelter in place or lockdown, uh, evacuation. And we're going to try to give as much information as we can. But basically speaking, shelter in place is letting people know that there's a problem right now that we want you to kind of hide out or stay right where you are. You know, freeze. Uh, don't move. Don't walk around. Try not to go to a particular area on campus. We have the lockdown. The lockdown is, is a more uh, severe threat. Um, when we send out a lockdown warning, uh, we're actually going to ask people to lock the doors, lock themselves inside something. If they're outside, we want them to get someplace very, very safe, um, get inside where they're, they're locked down, uh, out of sight, out of mind. And then the evacuation. In the event that we had to evacuate, we'd send out an evacuation notice. Um, we would try to be very specific with an evacuation. Um, obviously, fire alarms are very common practices for, for, for evacuations. We all learned about how to, to evacuate um, from a building in kindergarten. Um, so that really hasn't changed, but evacuations, depending on the scenario or situation, we'll, we'll send that message out as well. One of the other things we do is um, D DPS on our website, we have a violent intruder training video um, available for both students and uh, an optional one for employees. Um, and we highly encourage everyone to watch that violent intruder video or shots fired on campus. Um, it's pretty informative to kind of give an insight on what um, expectations are, what you, the individual, can do to prepare yourself, what you, the individual, can do to protect yourself. And then it talks a little bit about law enforcement response. Um, we do a lot of training in preparation for some of the severe incidents that could potentially occur um, in today's society. Um, we do a lot of training. But we found out that the community lacks that training or lacks the understanding or the expectations of what might occur. So that video, it's 22 minutes long for the student version, um, and we, we encourage everyone to watch it. We recently did um, present the video to all the um, residents or the new first-year students who are residing on campus. Um, so they all had an opportunity to take a look at it, but it is available on our website, so anyone can pretty much click a link and watch the video.
And we would encourage you to look at our DPS website. You can go on our website. We have a lot of information about the department, other services that we provide that I haven't been able to explain to you this afternoon. Um, so there is a very good website for you to take a look at. All right, you have to have a plan. Um, we don't know when something's going to happen. It's great to watch the weather and have an understanding. We know this past weekend there was a lot of talk about a potential hurricane. Um, we were really concerned. We had a big plan how we we're going to move everyone in in the event that we have uh, heavy rains and high winds. And then Sunday came around for the first year students move in. It was gorgeous. It was a perfect move in day. All right, the sun was out, the temperatures were cool, um, and it was ideal. It truly was ideal. Um, but we had a plan just in case. Um, and we want everyone else to have a plan as well. Now, what, do I, what does our plan need to entail? Well, we, obviously we can't plan for everything because we just don't know what's going to happen next. Um, but we are in southern Connecticut, okay, southern New England, and it does snow here. Um, if we, we do get blizzards, we will get uh, 24 inches of snow or better occasionally. Um, we might see one snowstorm after another, so snow starts to pile up. Um, so we want people who are in this area, especially if you're not from the New England area, if you're not used to snow, um, try to figure out how to, to deal with it, how to cope with it, and have a plan. Um, so emergency supplies, a shovel in the car, um, make a world of difference. Keeping an extra coat in the car, gloves in the car. So anyone from the from uh, the Northern Hemisphere knows it's nice in the wintertime to keep some spare stuff in the car. Um, but what about your room? You want to keep stuff in your room, supplies in your room. Um, and that's just talking about weather. Uh, hurricanes have been known to hit the area. We know uh, for those people who are from the tri-state area, um, we all remember um, flooding and issues like that. So um, although Fairfield University's campus is probably far enough away from the beach line that we're not too concerned with uh, flooding on campus from the ocean, um, but we do have our students that live at the beach um, who are often affected by this, and we do bring them onto campus so they have a place to stay in safety. Um, but in the event of prolonged power, outage, power outages, for example, we may have to close the school. Um, other things that might strain the transportation system in the Northeast, we might have to close the school because we might be unable to get supplies to the campus to, to feed the students. So sometimes, occasionally, we may send people home. So when we say have a plan or know your secondary escape routes, um, we all know to have a primary escape route. Where's the red exit sign? Um, how do I leave the classroom and get outside? But well, how do we leave campus? How would I go home? if we had to shut the campus down for an emergency. Um, you know, everyone knows the driving routes, uh, but what are the trains? What are the plane schedules? Um, how can I get to the train station? Um, who else lives in my area? Um, so if you're from uh, upstate New York, who else is from upstate New York? So maybe we can do a lot of ride sharing options. Um, so there's a lot of things to start to consider just in case. Now, we hope nothing ever happens. We hope to never shut the school down and send everyone home. Um, we prefer to keep everyone here. We prefer to keep pushing forward. But just in case, how else can we uh, achieve our goal? Um, and how else can we keep the student community safe? So that's a very quick overview on the Department of Public Safety and who we are and some of the services we provide. We're very excited to have the class of 2020 here. Uh, at this point, we'd like to open it up to questions from you. So we had a few questions. The first one, where can the dates of the self-defense classes be found? Is there a fee? If so, how much are the students made aware of classes or encouraged to attend? So the RAD program, or Rape Aggression Defense, we offer the RAD program um, every semester. I don't believe we've picked our, our dates yet for this particular semester, but we should be doing it very, very soon. Um, what we're going to do as part of our welcome back um, so the community offerings is uh, we will send officers out to each residence halls within the next week um, to, to personally knock on every door, welcome people back, ask them if they have any concerns, to make some one-on-one -on -one contacts and personal information. And uh, when we do go around, we will have our RAD dates pretty much set. The RAD program is free of charge. Um, right now, we only offer it to females. It is a 16-hour program that will usually run on four uh, separate nights. Um, we tend to like to do them on Tuesdays and Thursdays for two weeks in a row. Uh, so you get 16 hours of training out of that. Uh, we'll advertise that. There'll be flyers up um, in the residence halls. We'll have uh, advertisements throughout the campus as well. Uh, great. One parent is asking how large the DPS staff is. Okay, so we have 20 full-time officers and several part-time officers. Uh, generally, we have four-plus officers on any given shift. 
Perfect. Um, and how frequently are DPS officers trained? Um, we provide a variety of different training topics, uh, pretty much what a police officer would receive, uh, plus other uh, training topics that are unique to the university. Perfect. Uh, one parent is asking if you could just review the medical amnesty policy again. Sure. So if uh, someone was ill because of intoxication or a friend was ill because of intoxication and wanted to get medical help, uh, they can call our department uh, and there would not be any judicial ramifications behind getting help. One parent is asking what are the most prevalent crimes on campus? Petty theft. Um, our biggest problem on this campus is getting students to keep their, their doors locked. Um, you know, a lot of some of the residence halls, they'll walk out of their door, they'll walk down the hall to use the restroom, and by the time they get back, someone had already entered the room and took something from the hall from them. Um, we used to see this a lot with uh, CDs, DVDs, um, would disappear very quickly. Um, although we see a re big reduction in CDs and DVDs out there. Um, but that's pretty much how it happens. It's, it's somebody leaves something on their desk, somebody leaves something visible, um, they go out of the room without locking the door, someone comes in looking for them, realizes they're not there, but sees an opportunity to take something um, right from the desktop. It only takes a few short seconds. Um, we also see the same issue occurring in the library. Students get very comfortable in our library um, as we would want them to. Um, but when you leave uh, valuable things sitting on a desktop and then you go look for a particular book in the stacks, um, you might be gone for five minutes from your desk and come back and realize somebody took a thumb drive out of your computer or somebody took your cell phone that you left sitting on the table. Um, it doesn't happen often. I mean, sure, it doesn't happen that often, but that would be our biggest issue on this campus. And we would encourage people to uh, get those cable locks for their laptops. It's a good investment. That actually goes along with the next question. One parent said, I have heard that there were a lot of robberies in Regis Hall last year and that it was a huge problem. What is security doing to ensure that this doesn't happen this year? I also heard that in the building there aren't security cameras in the hallway. So each residence hall now has camera systems on every floor. Um, Regis had the, the security cameras last year and there was one particular night where three individuals walked around the residence hall going into students' unlocked rooms and taking items. Um, so we had two non-students, or excuse me, three non-students and then one student um, host that, that brought them to campus that accompanied them around. Uh, once we learned that the people were in the building and maybe entering rooms, um, we quickly apprehended them. Um, and then the use of the CCTV system allowed us to figure out uh, where they were in the building, what rooms they entered. And we were actually able to go to students and say, hey, we think somebody entered your room and took something and brought the information to them. And arrests were made in that situation. Great. And maybe you could go into the guest policy a little bit more as well. So the Fairfield University guest policy, students are allowed to have two guests for two nights. Um, if you're going to have a guest for more than two consecutive nights, you do have to get permission from both your roommate and your uh, area coordinator, it's the residence hall area coordinator, uh, to have a guest for more than that. Um, all guests on campus are required to be registered in advance. Uh, so students have the ability to go into an online program uh, to register their guests so we know exactly who the guest is that's coming in advance. Guests who do come to campus are required to be um, escorted by their student host at all times. Guests are required to have state-issued photo identification so that if we do come across them, we'd be able to positively identify them. Great. Just two more questions. Um, do you ever test the Stag Alert system? Yes. Each semester, we do a test of the Stag Alert system. And what is DPS's relationship with Town of Fairfield Police? We have a great working relationship with the Fairfield Police Department. I regularly meet with the administrative staff um, from Fairfield as well as the state and federal law enforcement. Uh, we do a lot of co-training together as well. Perfect. Those are all the questions. All right. oh. Well, thank you very much.